as James Rado, Jerome Ragney, and Galt McDermott began the show creation process for Hair the Musical in 1964, they based their storyline around the current social, political, and economic issues at the time, and chose to set their show in the midst of the hippie counterculture movement of the 1960s. Rado, Ragney, and McDermott triumphed in receiving excellent reviews on their production and discussing unpopular or seemingly taboo themes at the time, such as interracial relationships, calling out racial prejudice, homosexuality, and open opposition towards the Vietnam War through the use of a widely accessible and prominent platform in Broadway theater. Even though the creators of Hair still suffered the tragedy of criticism and backlash due to the controversial themes and uncensored material present within the musical, the musical has successfully made an impact on creative expression within the theater world, and has become an icon in modern-day pop culture. After meeting each other in the failed off-Broadway production Hang Down Your Head and Die, Jerome Ragney and James Rado were inspired to create a musical together entitled Hair, a name influenced by a painting by Jim Dine. Eventually, after starting the creation process in 1964, they met up with Galt McDermott, who composed the music for the show, whilst Rado and Ragney co-wrote the script and lyrics. Ending their six-week off-Broadway run at the Public Theater in October 1967, they moved the show to the Cheetah Theater with a new producer, Michael Butler. Eventually, the production made its Broadway debut on April 29, 1968, where it then ran for four years. Since James Rado and Jerome Ragney began writing in 1964, they were inspired by the hippie movement of the 1960s. The movement's influence on hair is apparent through the topics hippies promoted, such as free love, recreational drug use, and anti-war sentiment. The choreography by Julie Arenal and direction by Tom O'Horgan reflects the loose, drug-induced, close-bodied nature of hippie tribes, as shown by the cast appearance on the Smothers Brothers show in 1968. The costuming by Nancy Potts reflects how many young people at the time chose to dress in flowy, comfortable, beaded clothing, with long hair never cut as a form of opposition towards young men being drafted into the war and having to cut their hair. Songs such as Hair and I Got Life express the carefree essence of hippies, appreciating whatever life hands them, even if they themselves possess nothing. Once the U.S. entered the Vietnam War on March 8, 1965, young people in America began their opposition towards it, since they believed the government was sending young men to their deaths to fight in a battle that wasn't theirs. This sparked a wave of peaceful protest in which slogans related to Make Peace Not War were promoted, draft cards were burned, and men's hair was left uncut. Examples of this peaceful protest are shown in Hair, which include the draft card ripping scene, in this scene, Claude, played by James Rado, chooses not to burn his card, leading to him being drafted and eventually killed in the war. Claude's death is intended to show the harsh realities of life in war. The songs Where Do I Go and The Flesh Failures highlight how America is becoming a dying nation due to this endless violence and the struggle for young men in America who had to choose between their obligation and their comfortable lives at home. By the 1960s, most U.S. states had some form of law that outlawed consensual sodomy. Even though these laws applied to all U.S. citizens, they were often used to target and incarcerate homosexuals. In contrast to these laws, Hare openly embraced free love, homosexuality, and the ability for platonic male friends to have a close friendship, as in being able to hug one another. The character Woof, played by Steve Curry, makes references to his love for Mick Jagger and sings the song Sodomy, in which he lists several sexual acts including sodomy and asks the question, why do these words sound so nasty, in an effort to understand why words such as these create an instant shock in some people. The Civil Rights Act of 1964, which called for desegregation, was enacted at the start of the show creation process, and interracial marriage was only officially legalized in 1967 at the time of Hare's off-Broadway debut. 
Although these acts were passed and acted as a progressive step towards racial equality, racial prejudice still permeated America since desegregation was so recent. With this in mind, Hare took a big step for racial acceptance by having one of the first fully integrated casts in America, with African Americans making up one-third of the cast, including stars such as Lori Davis, Melba Moore, Ronnie Dyson, and Lamont Washington. In Colored Spade, the character HUD, played by Lamont Washington, lists all the derogatory remarks shouted at him on a regular basis, such as shoeshine boy and the n-word. However, in doing so, he takes the risky opportunity to make fun of those who call him those names by sarcastically commenting he is absolutely the monster they compare him to. Also, songs like Black Boys, White Boys discussed interracial relationships and the troubles they caused at the time, as shown by the lines in White Boys, My daddy warns me stay away, my brother calls him rubble. My daddy warns me no, no, no. When James Rado and Jerome Ragney first tried to get hair produced, they were turned down several times since many producers did not want to jeopardize their reputation on a production containing such a large quantity of risque material. Also, once the show hit the public, it received plenty of negative reviews due to the controversial themes prevalent within the musical. In one instance, famous American composer and conductor Leonard Bernstein walked out of a production, as did the Apollo 13 astronauts who left after witnessing an actor wrap himself in an American flag during the song, Don't Put It Down. They believe the musical displayed a disrespect towards the flag. In addition, the nude scene involving Steve Garnett, Jerome Ragney, and Steve Curry at the end of Act 1 during the song, Where Do I Go?, was the topic for controversy, since it was the very first full frontal nude scene performed in Broadway history. Although Hare was attacked by negative criticism, it also received raving reviews. Clive Barnes wrote in his 1968 entry in the New York Times that, I think it is simply that it is so likable, so new, so fresh, and so unassuming even in its pretensions. He also wrote that the musical has been made into the Frankish show in town. Also, a 1968 ad for Hare included several positive quotes from many reputable news sources, such as Leonard Propes from NBC, who claimed Hare to be the only new concept in musicals on Broadway in years and more fun than any other this season. Since Hare contained a large amount of content related to sensitive issues in society Rado and Ragney wanted to address, they paved the way for many other creators to express their creative visions without the worry of overwhelming criticism. Now, Hare has become a pop culture icon due to its recognizable songs like Aquarius, Let the Sunshine In, and Good Morning Starshine. These songs have been covered by many different artists and have made their appearances in shows that mimic the hippie-like movements and costuming from the original production, such as The 40-Year-Old Virgin in 2005, and Sesame Street in 1969. In conclusion, although Hair received criticism due to its controversial themes and risque material, the show's creators succeeded on voicing their opinions on the avoided topics of interracial relationships, racial prejudice, homosexuality, and opposition towards the Vietnam War. The musical has now found a spot in modern pop culture and has shaped the abilities of musical theater. Ooh.